Welcome, everybody, to JW Broadcasting. My co-host is Brother Isaac Murray. Now, his given name is Isaac, but we all call him Sauce. I'm so glad to see you, Sauce, because we've got a lot of work today. If Satan could cause just one of Jehovah's promises to be delivered orally, you will have a son. Sauce will be his name. If you Jesus, you are no friend of Sauce. He's God's friend. Jehovah loves his friend, Sauce. He wants you to love Sauce, too. Maybe I'm being too sensitive, but I was hurt by what Sauce said the other day. Brothers Plain, always lose. How reassuring that is to all of us. Hey everyone, my name's Jake. Welcome to the show. Running a little late. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, and what, what I said my name is Jake, right? That was part of the intro. Uh, I'm a former Jehovah's Witness, current person trying to get their hair underway. I like just got out of the shower like five minutes ago uh, because, as usual, I was lollygagging, and I need to explain myself before we get into all of the business today. Uh oh, audio sucks. People are saying. Oh, shit. What's going on with the, 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 the audio? Well, I'm going to keep talking until someone tells me what's going on. Oh, shit. Oh, I see what it is. Testing, testing. Okay, okay. How how was that? It was trying to pick up the microphone like on my Bluetooth headphone. That was part of the issue here. Okay, this is uh, probably the worst start to a stream of all time. Um, leftist audio, as they say. Okay, listen. I've got some explaining to do for a couple of reasons. One. Uh, I was going to like kick off Sunday service having its own feed and I, I messed it up. I messed it up. So I, I'm still waiting for my Sunday service channel to uh, be able to live stream. You have to enable it and it like takes 24 hours. So that's just me being stupid. Uh, but I am going to see if I can find it so I can tell you to subscribe to it now. Well, after this is over, I'm going to put a link in the description. I'll make a pinned comment. All that stuff. Uh, audio volume is okay, but quality is bad. Are we, are we good now? Are we better now? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, listen. We'll see how we do. We'll see how we do. I want to talk a little bit about... The newest broadcast, which we uh, talked about, um, which we talked about, no, which we showed in the in the introduction, and uh, I also have some other things on my mind regarding Doomsday and Armageddon and so forth. I also was going to do a thing today where I like do a live video essay, like where I try to do my script live and have all the clips pulled up. But I've just, it's been a bad week for me, and it's continuing today, apparently, with the luck I've had on this stream. Uh, my depression has just been awful, and I've just have not been able to do anything. It's been one of those um, times where it's just, like, hard to get out of bed and stuff. How's that for a fun intro to a stream? But we're going to have fun, because this intro uh, that we watched... <laughs> Uh, this broadcast is silly. It's a silly broadcast, and there's an eclipse coming up. It's not the first eclipse of my lifetime. Seems like they happen every few years, but some people are absolutely losing their mind over it. And I thought today we might shift our focus, broaden out a little bit, and talk about some of the groups 
who are not Jehovah's Witnesses, but still think the world is going to end really soon. This is a branch off of the Seventh-day Adventists. They have a YouTube channel called Prophesy TV. And here's a little bit of one of their live streams that I caught yesterday. Friends, talk to me. The commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Romans chapter 1, look at verse 1. The Bible says God uses the visible things to make known the truth, to make known that which is invisible. So we can use the solar eclipse as an object lesson. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? So what is a solar eclipse and what are people not purchasing? In order to view that eclipse on this coming Monday, they're purchasing solar eclipse glasses. Why? If you look at the sun with the beer eye, it will destroy your eyes. But my friends, how many people are going to be protecting their eyes, but they're not protecting their soul salvation? The brightness of Christ's second coming will smite the unrepentant people dead. Duh, 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 duh. So that's just one of many interesting church leaders out there saying that the world is going to end. So I thought we'd get into that. You know, normally we're just so focused on one doomsday group. And I'm kind of working on a video that talks about Christian cults and end time prophecies. So uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about that since it kind of ties in but we we do have to talk about our old buddies our old buddies at watchtower bible and track society.com.org backslash biz so let's pull this up here and um we don't have to go through the entire thing in detail it's I think it's pretty boring for the most part, uh, but there is a really interesting bit. Obviously, we have the electrifying chemistry between David and Saz, whose name allegedly is Saki. And th there's a couple interesting things about this. One is that David Spillane sort of threatens all governments and courts who rule against Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, I mean, they do that a lot, but the timing of this one's kind of interesting. And then the other thing that's weird about it is I noticed just when I was trying to make a dumb edit for the intro to this show, uh, there's there's a weird edit in this. I'm always curious about their edits in JW Broadcasting. So uh, let's watch a little bit of our friends, Saki and Rocky. Um, well, yeah, I think... I've been interested in these church groups that have a huge presence on YouTube because it feels like this area of Watchtower that's totally untapped. And it's it makes sense why they don't want to get involved because they're so worried about apostates. And unlike a lot of evangelical Christianity, they don't have this infrastructure of like apologists on YouTube where if you start watching a bunch of Jehovah's Witness stuff, it's just going to filter you to other Christian things. Like, not really. It's just going to filter you to apostate stuff, which, of course, uh, they, they don't want. But anyway, let's get into this. I found this introduction so weird. It's so strange. Welcome, everybody, to JW Broadcasting. My co-host is Brother Isaac Murray. It was given name is Isaac, but we all call him Saki. Yeah, do I'm that. I'm so glad to see you, Saki, because we've got a lot of work today. One like is one Saki. Why don't you tell us something about it? Thank you. Uh, I'll be happy to do so. I was born in South Africa in a very small town called Blaifuretse. My father... Okay. So immediately this is a little weird, right? Normally the introduction is just... They say, hey, it's the it's JW Broadcasting. Here's what's going to come up on the show. And then they do the little opening montage. And it almost feels like David Splane did that thing where he's like, hey, how are you doing, Saki? And Saki just launches into his life story and talks for like 10 minutes straight. Simply by reading a tract. Hmm. 
And then when I was about 10 like, years mm, old, okay. I read the book, What Has Religion Done for Mankind? Mm. And I was convinced that my mother had the truth. My two brothers and three sisters also embraced the truth True. at an early age. And to this day, all of them serve Jehovah faithfully in various parts of the earth. Good. Good. While I was okay. in my Good. final up, year Akish. at Good. school, and then he keeps I was going. invited he just to keeps come going. to Bethel. And I started Bethel's service. Like, look at this. I know, but it took me under he just to keeps going. I every assignment that the you The broadcast hasn't it's even started. Helpless. So and watch this. I'll be glad. Why don't you give us the highlights of what we can expect during the program? <laughs> it's just I'll be four glad minutes to, in. David. This is like one of my As screens. As the system you know? nears its end, we may at times feel trapped and helpless. How can we be sure that Jehovah is still helping us? Many years ago, Karen found joy and fulfillment with her spiritual family. Wow. But her life serving Jehovah hasn't been easy. What? We'll see how she's doing in the next episode of the series, Where Are They Now? <laughs> Have you ever wished that Great. you could have more conversations in the ministry? Oh my God. It's so painful. It's so painful. It's so slow. And like Mariah and chat was saying, it's this like slow, creepy toddler speak. It's a little different than the fundy accent that you hear. Um, but th there's just a thing. Motion to take a shot of Saki every time Saki says something nobody cares about. <laughs> If I had Saki, I would I would take you up on that. Well, hey, you know what? I probably wouldn't because I've been um, alcohol sober for a decent decent bit here. I haven't had any alcohol in in quite a long time at this point. How do I smoke a little the devil's lettuce? Sure, sure I do. Um, I wonder if he got busted doing something inappropriate with a sock. Oh yeah, they don't because his name is what Isaac. I guess the back half of the name Isaac is Zach, Saki, but I think something happened in Bethel with a sock. That's my take. So with Saki's there, and then he just isn't. He just disappears. And then there's a clunky handoff. Now, for those of you who might have come in late, and let's just say hypothetically, uh, let's just say for the sake of argument that I edit off the beginning of this stream because it was terrible. Well, I want to give you, uh, I'm going to redo the introduction. I'm going to play the introductory clip that I played it because I'm going to edit out the beginning of this stream. It was so bad. I was so flustered and weird and my audio was messed up. Why am I even talking about it now? But I think we should enjoy Sauce and, and Saki. Welcome everybody to JW Broadcasting. My co-host -co is Brother Isaac Murray. It was given name as Isaac, but we all call him Sauce. I'm so glad to see you, Sauce, because we've got a lot of work today. If Satan could cause just one of Jehovah's promises to be delivered orally, you will have a son. Sauce will be his name. If you Jesus, you are no friend of Sauce. He's God's friend. Jehovah loves his friend, Sauce. He wants you to love Sauce, too. Maybe I'm being too sensitive, but I was hurt by what Sauce said the other day. Brothers Plain, always lose. How reassuring that is to all of us. <laughs> okay, I <laughs> just I just had to, I'm sorry. Um never have I heard Saki as a nickname for Isaac. I know. I know. It's very strange. Okay. Saucy. <laughs> okay. Sauce is kind of the chosen one a little bit. There's such good friends. And this is not the first time that David Splain has chosen Saki as his co-host for a broadcast. But it's really weird. I, I think it's just an example of one of those things where when you are in charge and you're just surrounded by yes men. <laughs> the movie Yes Man, and also Yes Men, nobody can tell you no. Nobody can be like, actually, David, 
these are the cringiest, creepiest things of all time. Whenever you guys are talking, it seems like there's a laser sight on your head that's going to kill one of you if you don't get through the broadcast. But nobody can tell them that. So they just do this embarrassing thing for all of us to laugh at. An outstanding fact is recorded at Isaiah 55. <laughs> it does. Oh, no. Isn't that um, well, just Martin as the Short? Rain and the snow pour down from heaven and do not return there until they saturate the Okay, earth, we, can, we don't need orally, this. Or in writing. Oh, let's hear this. My delight. The word of God is the statement of his purpose. Now, it can be delivered orally or in writing. We call the Bible God's written word, and rightly so. But long before... I hate everything about this talk, by the way. I find David Splain very creepy. He's kind of my guy that I hate. We all have a guy that, that we hate. It's just fun, you know, like a villain. And they don't know it, and they, you can't really do anything about it. But it's just a guy you hate. That's me with David Splain. I just find everything he does super annoying. <laughs> and every practice little gesture, like the amount of times he goes like, hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like he does little, little eyebrow raises, and he does a lot of fake chuckling in this. Before writing was invented, Jehovah expressed his purpose in words. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Through Isaiah, uh, Jehovah's telling wistfully. us that he will always accomplish his purpose. So no matter how powerful fighters against that purpose seem to Is Isaiah's nickname Sassy? Since Isaac is so Saki? Who seem unbeatable. So I thought we might... Oh, yeah, okay. So this is actually the theme of his talk, which is like, oh, Satan's enemies, they seem so unbeatable. How can we ever conquer them? Which I think is a little strange because who thinks that as Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> like, well, the whole reason why you join up is that you think that the group is right and that they're going to conquer mankind. You know, Jehovah's going to destroy all the enemies. So I don't know who these people are who's like... It just seems like Satan always wins. I don't know. Yeah, sound off in, in chat as to who people hate. Um, Joe, Joe is standing by the camera with a gun. It does seem like that a little bit. Um, Anders is this person that they hate is Sanderson. Please do sound off in chat. Somebody doesn't like Sammy. <laughs> Call me Sammy. Good deal. Okay. Uh, so he's like, people get discouraged because obviously Satan's racking up W's all the time. How can we get some wins? How can we not be discouraged? And something about oral? They will always lose in the end. Mm. Remember, Talking about us. Help us when we're faced with opposers who seem unbeatable. So I thought we might consider some Bible examples. He's talking about us, chat. We're the opposers who seem unbeatable. The days of King Saul, for example. I never felt so powerful. Now, Jehovah sent Samuel to anoint the next king of Israel. Call him Samuel. was recorded at 1 Samuel 16. Okay, this choice. is boring, this part. At some point, Saul... Maybe we shouldn't have this image, by the way, of this old guy pouring something on this boy. It's a little weird. Himself understood that. In fact, according to 1 Samuel 23, 17, his son Jonathan said to David, you will be king over Israel. And my father... Should, do, I, do we need to do, like, maybe uh, next week even, like a tier list of the governing body people? We should talk about how to approach it, because they're all pretty bad. But... Maybe you could rank it on like how likely they are to leave the group and like be the next Ray Franz. Like who who has a bit of light still in them? <laughs> like like Anakin or Kylo Ren. Who 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 do you see and you think there's still light in him? I know it. Uh that's a that's a tough one. That's a tough one. But we gotta we gotta think Father Saul also knows that. Confirming this. On one occasion, Saul said to David, I know 
that you will surely rule as king. Hey, what the hell am I doing? We can speed this bad boy up. Let's start with 1.2. In spite of it all. So this is great. Kill David. And he had the support of a powerful army. So <gasps> himself was apparently a very strong man. Oh. Still, it was God's will for David to become king. And Saul knew it. So we ask, why did Saul keep on fighting? <laughs> Damn, there's like a dog barking outside. Is that picking up on Mike? Probably a little bit. Listen to this little sassy fucking noise he makes. So we ask, why did Saul keep on fighting? <laughs> and and who was he it? fighting, really? Not just David. He was fighting against God. This is so not even discernibly fast. setting himself up for failure. No doubt Satan was egging Saul on. If Satan could cause just one of Jehovah's promises to fail. But in the end, the word of God prevailed. David became king. Well, who would replace David when the time came? <laughs> what happened it was also there? Jehovah's decision to make, and he made it. According to First Chronicles 22, 9 and 10, Jehovah told David... So, I okay, I had an idea for a script I started messing with, and it just wasn't worth it. And I felt like I had been too focused on broadcast lately. But I started this script where the joke was just going to be that I try to prove that David Splane and Saki are actually androids. They're actually robots. There's a couple moments in this where David Splane appears to just glitch, just like glitch out. Uh, so I'll point those out at the time that at the appointed time. Look, you will have a son. Keep on the watch. Solomon prove yourself ready. Name, and I will firmly establish the throne of his kingship over Israel forever. So Solomon would be the next king of Israel. Who could prevent that from happening? David's son, Adonijah, tried and failed. Why? As quoted at 1 Kings 2.15, he later admitted, The kingship eluded me and became my brother's, for it was from Jehovah that it became his. If Adonijah thought he could outmaneuver Jehovah, <laughs> he was sadly mistaken. Jehovah promised the Israelites that he would give them the... If Adonijah thought he could outmaneuver Jehovah, he was sadly mistaken. Jehovah promised the Israelites that he would give them the land of Canaan as an inheritance. The Canaanites had other ideas. They'd heard of Jehovah's powerful works in He's Egypt. He's just so they like against him anyway. They learned. They learned at their cost that fighters against God. What is that lose. energy? What would you call that? Now, if you were asked to name some prominent fighters against God in Jesus' day, you might think of King Herod the Great, the Jewish high priest Caiaphas, and maybe the Roman governor. Paul. I like this is something that David's plane does that I've noticed where he like will ask a he'll pose a very weird and specific hypothetical question it, so that he can sound smart he's like if you were asked who some prominent powerful enemies of jehovah were during christ's presence on earth well who who would you say oh you probably list so and so and so and so like he does this sometimes and he'll be like i'll give you a moment to think about it principal energy oh that's it double o that is it Double O has two kills. Your file shows no kills. And it takes two. Sorry. We could also just watch Casino Royale if we we get in that the kind of pilot. Let's talk about them. Hmm. First, like Herod the Great. Hmm. Let's read Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. I think this is where he glitches. Now, astrologers, visit King Herod. And they ask a strange question. <laughs> strange. After Jesus had been born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king. Look, astrologers from the east came to Jerusalem saying, where is the one born king of the Jews? King of the Jews? For we saw his star when we were in the east and we have come to do... So what the fuck just happened here? What is happening? I don't know. This like really... I, I listened to this just like in the background at work when this came out. And I thought that I had just accidentally hit the back five seconds button... Or that maybe the verse said it twice, but listen to this. It doesn't say it twice. He says it in the exact same intonation. It's a little creepy, actually. I'm going to play it at normal speed. Astrologers from the east came to and Jerusalem then we'll do slow saying, of course. where is the one born king of the Jews? King of the Jews? Why does that happen? What the fuck is this? It's king of the Jews times twos. King of the twos. You know what? That would be amazing because I've actually never seen uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. 
everything I know about that, I know from Paula Tompkins doing Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber on Comedy Bang Bang. Um, <laughs> true. I mean, who am I to get all high and mighty about this? Although this is a broadcast with months of prep time. It's just weird. I don't know why he's doing this. It's not like King of the Jews is the thing he ends up emphasizing later. For we saw his star when Richard I do King... think we should hear it in slow motion, just just in case we can hear something, you know, like a Paul is dead scenario where you play a day in the life backwards. Okay. To Jerusalem saying, where is the one born king of the Jews? King of the Jews. He does say it a little bit different the second time. I don't know. Maybe he just had like a senior moment or as I call them, an ADHD person in their 30s moment. For we saw his star when we were in the east, the birth of the king of the Jews. That's a stretch. Who do you suppose put that idea in their head? And who do you suppose gave... This is really strange. This is worth stopping down on, actually, because this is... Um, the Watchtower's unique ability to just insert fan fiction into the Bible. They're like... <laughs> Where where do you think they they got that idea? Must be Satan, obviously. And if we if it's Satan, then we can say this: like they they love the if then fallacy. Did you notice something strange here? No angel had spoken to those astrologers. Yet when the men saw a light in heaven, they concluded that it signaled the birth of the King of the Jews. That's a stretch. Who do you suppose put that idea in their head? And who do you suppose gave them the bright idea to ask the present King of Israel about his future rival? That has Satan the devil written all over it, doesn't it? Now, notice Doesn't verses it? three and four. And no. Is, King Herod was agitated, and all Jerusalem with him, all gathering together. He I'll be honest, like, I have trouble even understanding what he's saying. I guess he's just saying that astronomy is satanic, so it must have been from Satan. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, he realized mid-sentence it was a question. I'll bet you're right. <laughs> That's stretchy as to your lens's face. Oh, my God. What does David Spleen's wife look like? Now, there's a question. I don't know if it's a stretch when the, like, chapter three of the Bible contains a snake talking by a demon possession and a magical fruit that takes away perfection. But that's, he asks, you know, where the Christ will be born. Now, as a Jewish proselyte, he is supposed to be waiting for the Christ, the Messiah. Yet, now that the Messiah has come, Herod wants to kill him. Herod is fighting against God. Hmm. Does he win? No. Jesus escapes no. his clutches. And a few months later, Herod himself dies. Few Man, where's that edit death. I was noticing? In Jesus' day, the Jewish high priests were appointed and removed by the Romans. The high priest Caiaphas was a skilled politician. He knew how to please the Romans. And because of that, he hung on mm. to his job a lot longer than many others. And he had a powerful supporter, Pontius Pilate. With his connections, Caiaphas seemed untouchable. I'm like he said Pontius. Pilate himself was very well connected. He had a good friend in high places in Rome, Lucius Sejanus. Now, maybe you've never heard of Sejanus before, but he was probably the most powerful man in the Roman Empire. The emperor left most of the major decisions to Sejanus. Now, he made many enemies, but they were but powerless this is, against him. But apparently Until, he's the only one that's not laid, because I... That's not laid, oh my God. That's not married. Uh, because I just assumed that Kenneth Cook wasn't married. <laughs> And I was just totally wrong. I think I had a whole running bit about that last week, and I was totally wrong. Uh, so, yeah, Sanderson's the only one who is involuntarily celibate, one might say. Sanderson is a catch by JW standards. Well, this just makes you wonder, doesn't it? Why is this guy so deeply unappealing? Raises some questions. I've got questions. Oh, I forgot to unpause. So Janus got on the wrong side of the emperor and was put Man, to I'm going to have to, like, After actually that, render that clip the, the weird edit. That anyone who had been friends with Sejanus was to be executed. How do you think Pilate felt? That little... He must have been mm -hmm. wreck. As we said, he and Sejanus had been very close. And now, a year and a half after <laughs> Sejanus was executed, what do you suppose Pilate was thinking when the Jewish rulers cried out, if you release Jesus, you are no friend of Caesar. Some scholars believe that this was a factor in Pilate's decision to order Jesus' execution. 
to protect his own job. Mm. Did he protect it? No. Pilate wasn't immediately struck by lightning. But less than four years after he sentenced Jesus to death, he got into big trouble and was recalled to Rome. With no powerful friend to defend him, Pilate was removed as Roman governor. But four years later, a completely unrelated thing happened that we're just going to say was God fulfilling a, a prophecy or something. Like, what? what? This is like pandemic logic or what? whatever the conspiracy is. It's just like, is it died suddenly? It's just anybody who ever got the COVID vaccine, if they ever die for any reason, <laughs> there are people who are like, it's because of that. You know, you it's the uh, correlation, not causation thing. Pontius Pilate died four years later. He didn't actually die. He just, what, lost his job and then wandered off. And then David Swain's like, well, probably nothing good happened to him. What happened next isn't clear. Some say Pilate committed suicide. Aha, okay, I think I got it. Okay, so watch this. First, I'm going to watch this at normal speed and see if you can notice this. What happened next isn't clear. Some say Pilate committed suicide. See that little... Others say he there was like a little blur on his face. So I'm going to slow it down. I meant to render this like as a slow motion clip, but I was being lazy and I forgot. All right. Isn't clear. Some say Pilate committed suicide. Yeah, they like blended to. It's hard to say like they it just could have been a thing where they probably do these through a couple times and then blend them together like oh, comedians uh, edit their stand-up special together i or it's just a long awkward pause except for they always leave those in so i don't know there's something very odd going on not really it probably he just misspoke and said like erection on accident and they're like ha, 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 okay take it from the top david but others say he was banished whatever happened it wasn't good when Pilate lost his job, it's gotta be. Caiaphas lost his protector. As soon as <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Was this was the joke I was going to make in that video. Traitors against God. Pilate and Caiaphas were dispatched soon after they committed the greatest crime. We certainly don't want to be fighters against Jehovah God. How can we cooperate with this purpose today? Consider this scenario. A brother offends you. Here's another thing that's weird. Here's another thing that's weird. Is that Davis Blaine says, consider this scenario in the exact same intonation that he says in that apostate talk. Well, the anti-apostate talk, um, he does consider this scenario. An unbaptized Bible student encounters, I kept on wanting to say encourages, encounters information from like, like their unbelieving husbands. Is he just like a Woody from Toy Story ex, like esque toy who just has pre-recorded phrases through his drawstring? Or... What's is Gabby Gabby the name of the character in Toy Story 4? Characters with drawstrings and catchphrases is what I'm saying here. This isn't important. Says something thoughtless. You're hurt. Now, how does Jehovah view that person? <laughs> He's God's friend. Jehovah loves his friends. He wants you to love them too. Oh, that would what's be God's good. What's God's purpose for the brother who offended you? He wants him to enjoy life forever. Now, how can you work along with Jehovah's purpose? If you can just overlook the offense, Jehovah will appreciate that. But if you can't overlook it, Jehovah would want you to approach the person in a kind, respectful way. You might say something like this. Maybe I'm being too sensitive, but I was hurt. You might say something like this. He does that same exact thing in his apostate talk. I find this all very weird and infantilizing, too. It's just, on one hand, this speaks to the cognitive dissonance, I think, that you're that's just kind of mandated into your system. I think people just colloquially use cognitive dissonance wrong when referring to cults a lot. Like it means having to maintain two contradictory ideas in your head at the same time, like from the social psychology standpoint, at least as I understand it. And so like for Jehovah's Witnesses, on one hand, they have to constantly be on the watch and prove themselves ready with regards to who they associate with. Bad associations spoil useful habits. So you constantly have to be analyzing everybody to see if they are a good associate. See, there's just, everybody's kind of a police officer monitoring everybody else. This is a staple of all high control groups, right? Everybody rats on everybody else. Snitches, don't get stitches. 
in cults, they get riches. That's how I remember it. That thing I just made up. Um, but then at the same time, they're like, don't focus on people's flaws. Don't take offense easily. So you have to notice people's flaws all the time, but also you have to ignore them. Uh, double think. Yes, exactly. So anyway, I, it's weird and infantilizing, but it's just a way to constantly keep people on their toes, right? I was hurt by what you said the other day. No, I know you didn't mean to hurt me, but I thought I'd let you know how I felt. Two buddies, two responds, real David, friends, for sure. Unity is restored. Can you imagine how pleased Jehovah will be? Aww. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus... Can you imagine how pleased Jehovah will be? He'll be like, oh, guys, I'm so happy. Who is this God who's just constantly, like, seeing every event on earth like, this makes Jehovah sad. Mm, that one made me happy. Mm, I'm a little disappointed that Caleb almost ate the cake. Oh, but then he didn't play the video game, so now I'm happy and the angels are cheering. Like, is this what heaven is to Jehovah's Witnesses? Just like a spectator sport where Jehovah and the angels just, like, gather around like, all right, how much you want to bet David Splane's going to accidentally say erection during the broadcast and they're going to have to smear his face so people don't notice the edit and then they do like they throw all their heaven coins into a big heaven hat in the middle of a cloud i don't know this gave the illustration of the lost sheep a man had a hundred sheep one got lost the shepherd left the 99 in the field and went to great how many times in your life do you think you heard this as a witness if you are an ex jehovah's witness watching this i feel like i probably heard this literally 1 million times. I mean, you hear that fucking sheep illustration several times a week for your entire life. Go and reveal his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, notice. Now, a key thing here too is this this idea of keeping it everything in the family, like make peace with people in the congregation. And they don't stop and make exceptions. It's interesting to think about what he's talking about with such passion. I don't know. Um like, they don't say, unless, of course, it's a crime or you think someone is a PDF file enjoying person. Um, no, it's just like, first make peace with your brother. And it's it's just one way that's hard to articulate to, like, courts and journalists um, if we try to, like, pressure them to cover this cult more critically and raise awareness of it. There's a lot of things that are just obviously crazy on their website and in videos that you can point to, but some of the more cultural ingrained things are hard to prove because they're not set out right. It's just like there is a culture of not taking your brother to court and resolving things in the family and not trusting Satan's world. So anyway, let's listen to this last little bit. To gain our brother, not to expose him, not to get revenge, not to prove him wrong, not to shame him, but to get him back. Like that loving shepherd, we're willing to go to great lengths to bring that erring brother back to the fold. Of course, if the brother is an unrepentant sinner, the elders will follow the third step outlined by Jesus, and he'll be removed from the congregation. How else can we work along with Jehovah's purpose? We can do that by being involved in the preaching work. The word has gone Work along with... <laughs> great pause, these, first of all. <laughs> that was my impression of the King of Red Lions from Wind Waker, by the way. The boat. <laughs> um... That's what he's doing. Th this is another thing. <laughs> now I forgot what I was saying. Purpose. We can do that. By oh, yeah, yeah. Work alongside Jehovah's purpose. So one thing that cults do is they're very flattering to your ego. You are not just in a church that you like. It's you are working alongside God, the main one from the Bible. And so that obviously makes you feel amazing about yourself. You're better than all other Christians. At the same time, you're lower than dirt, and David Splane himself will be quick to remind you that life is more than any of us deserve. We don't deserve to live at all because we're so sinful. So that's another cognitive dissonance thing. Like, you have to believe that you're dirt, and you suck, and you don't deserve to live, and thank God Jehovah just doesn't smite you every day. But on the other hand, you're amazing because you have the truth, and you're working alongside with Jehovah's purpose, and the preaching work is the most important work taking place on earth today. Meh. By being involved in the preaching work, the word has gone out. This good news of the kingdom must be preached in all the inhabited earth. Many have tried to prevent that from happening. In the early 20th century, 
A few prominent brothers opposed the organization's efforts to get everyone involved in the preaching work. Many have tried. Those dignitaries were quite happy to get all dressed up and give. Whoa! Let this is a slow mo moment. I think he got real animated there. Let's let's take a look at this preaching work. Those dignitaries were quite happy to get all dressed up and give public talks to large audiences. Wow. Dignitaries dressing up when we do it every damn day, except maybe not as much anymore because we changed the rules. But they refused to lower themselves to go from house to house. They were fighting against God. And what? the angels soon <laughs> sifted them out. About? Most of them were never heard of again. Even in countries where there's a measure of religious freedom, fighters against God have tried to prevent us from carrying out our commission. You need a permit to go from house to house. You can't offer magazines on the street. You people are a dangerous sect. They've even enacted laws directed at stopping our work. Unless they change their ways, those lawmakers are going to be in big trouble. The word has gone out. As you go, preach. That great work will be accomplished with their support. Uh, this is, there's a lot in this, you know, this is really, this is really kind of nuts. This direct threat, if these lawmakers who have the audacity to make witnesses, you know, follow the law, like getting a permit, <laughs> like, I mean, I, I remember, is that the Stratton, Ohio case? I think I did like a middle school project on it, actually, because it, it was in Ohio. Um where there, there was a township that was making witnesses gain a permit, uh, permit. I think I just said per mint. One house per mint. They had to share all their mints. And they thought like, hey, this is free speech. This is America. Gosh, damn it. We should get to knock on as many doors as we want. And it was kind of a layup because obviously, like, what are you going to tell the Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts and Democrats and Republicans that they can't knock on doors? Obviously not. So um, I I don't know. I guess that's what he's talking about, these enemies of God. But they always make it seem like it's so personal to Jehovah's Witnesses. Like they hate Jehovah. They imagine the world as Pharaoh who just like hardens his heart against Jehovah because their translation, I think, skips the part where God is the one who manually hardens Pharaoh's heart. Like it's God's fault. Or in spite of them. Manual hardening. Well, as we mentioned, fighters against God sometimes seem to get away with their acts of rebellion, but they're on a slippery slope. I can't express it better than David did in Psalm uh, 37, 1 and 2. Oh, wow. How humble of you to acknowledge because that. of evil men or envious of wrongdoers. They will quickly wither like grass and shrivel like green new grass. Wow. Hey, David, you can't rhyme grass with grass. Your poetry is shit. So when you hear about powerful opposers who seem to be untouchable, remember what we've discussed. These men may seem to prosper for a while, but since they're fighting against God, they're more to be pitied than to be feared. They're on the wrong Who side. Who is this? They are fighting a losing battle. Thank you, Brother Splane, for your encouraging... The ah! And then just Saki's just like, hello, here I am. I'm Saki, here to say hello. Discussion. Fighters against God always lose. How reassuring that is Big to all of us. full body turn. Trusting Jehovah when faced with one problem after another is not easy. But it can mm -hmm. refine us. Okay, I think the rest of this is pretty boring, to be perfectly honest. But um, <laughs> he's, I think he said he's from South Africa, which is a really hard to do accent. I definitely can't do it. Um, okay, well, I want to just check real quick on jdb.org and, and see if we can glean any other little fun bits before we move on to our second segment which is other doomsday people. Uh, but I thought that was the most interesting part of the broadcast, this section where David Splane, in the midst of all their legal troubles, oh, wait, shit, speaking of kind of dramatic things happening within Watchtower, uh, I'm trying to find my own channel. Where is Altworldly? Uh, this seems like a problem that it doesn't bring up my channel when I search for it. Okay. Yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. Robert Hendricks. Oh, I, who I spelled his name wrong and I have to change it. Um, we've talked about Mr. Hendricks a, a great deal on this channel. He was the former head of PID, 
He was a famous knee toucher. He loved touching ladies' knees on local morning broadcast television. Somebody in a Facebook group I was in posted, hey, I saw Robert Hendricks on LinkedIn, and then it kind of spread throughout the community. So he's officially no longer the director of uh, CCJW, their PID department. That's their public information department. Though he does categorize it as like um, something he built. I don't know if this... I have a better screenshot of it, actually. I could probably pull up. But took a sabbatical from consulting practice to build public information department. Uh, so he describes his work with Watchtower PID as a sabbatical from his normal job, his secular job. Um, yeah, he is a Jehovah's Witness. He's actually, like, in one of their uh, dramas, right? Isn't he in a new one? <laughs> hey, you know who really knows Robert Hendricks? Or at least knows what he's capable of. It's Ron Pomo, by golly. And so, yeah, Robert Hendricks uh, just had an interesting little post on LinkedIn. Ah, oh, shit. All right, let me see if I can find uh, a better screenshot of this full LinkedIn thing. Pull up my fiotios. But I did have to include just a little bit of this, you know... This is a creepy picture, is it not? And then this kind of lascivious look he gives her. Very weird. I think this man's a huge creep. But, you know, it's not some scandal or anything. Obviously, he can do what he wants. Uh, presumably, he got paid something by Watchtower, if I had to guess. Maybe not. Sorry, I just had like a big yawn. A big yawn just... Uh, Hit me a Jan Fruit Nielsen, as a matter of fact. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can find this um version of it that contains all of the fun stuff. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna open this. Uh this how things work let's see if it'll let me share this sometimes it doesn't like the apple photo app okay it does it's a little janky let's let's get this where the hell is it okay Ah. Oh, yeah, you can because it's linked in. You can see his like weird little comments he left people. But anyway, he is now a principal managing partner at Fiducia Communications. You can't spell Fiducia without douche. Spokesperson, accredited public relations consultant, accredited educational planner. So this sounds like a guy with lots of college education, higher education. My goodness. Three decades of consulting work. I just, did I have the fucking screenshot? Damn it all to hell. Now, I think, um, I don't know. It might be worth like looking into these weird businesses of his just to see if they're all on the up and up just to make sure. I just question the ethics of a person who would lend his talents for a cult to cover up CSA and shunning and blood transfusion deaths and stuff. Um, you need me to email it? Yes, do it. Email it to me. Um, and then there was one other thing, but I let's just get into the crazy. <laughs> um, okay, so... I'm working on this video that, that may or may not come out in time for the actual eclipse, but um, I was just curious. I was just curious to see what my favorite kinds of people were saying about the eclipse. 
And apparently all of them are saying so many things about it. Uh, so let's take a look at... Uh, and what I didn't expect, because I, I just Googled like Eclipse Prophecy yesterday, and uh, and they all had to do with Trump. So if, warning, if you love Trump, I'm surprised that you love this channel. But hey, we welcome all comers like Trump. Uh, didn't he describe one of his people as a comer? We love Ron. He's a comer. But your boy is going to catch some heat in this segment because God Unlimited, this channel is very interesting. In 2017. So let's talk about this because to, to set this up, I, um, I'm working on this video that's about like how um, Christian cults work and specifically the way they just take little Bible passages apply it to random things in the modern day, say, hey, we understand it, and this is going to happen imminently, and then it doesn't, obviously. Um, and so Watchtower obviously does this all the time, but I think it's a use, like every Christian cult does this, and I think it's what separates like a cult form of Christianity from just normal Christianity, is this added metric of... Um, control and doomsday imminence uh i'm sorry i'm just catching up with chat and noticing people leaving interesting well hey listen folks i think you'll see why we're watching this when i watch it just because it's not that different from <laughs> watchtower Shit, I, it was continuing in a okay. victorious way. Hang on one second. This is a short video, but this is like, it gives a rundown of why um, evangelical, certain strands of like evangelicals are obsessing over this eclipse, even though like there was an eclipse a few years ago in 2017. I didn't really understand it. And so I wanted to understand it. And so here's what's going on. The, the, the eclipse is passing through Ohio where I live. So I've noticed a lot of this stuff. I've noticed a lot of weird posts. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to, to understand it. In 2017, there was an eclipse. That was the time where we see that President Trump, his first year successfully started, and it was continuing in a victorious way. And God made him to fulfill one of the prophecy concerning the second coming of Jesus. Because before the coming of Jesus, we see that the Lord told, I will bring back the Israelites, the scattered Israelites back to the nation. Should I go to this, by the way? The upcoming prophetic conference, which I have to assume is not free. Um, yeah, so this is what they're saying, is like all of this stuff with there's an eclipse and something with Israel and something with Trump. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. I think that I, I don't think that they're all cults, to be honest. Like, I think that somebody can just believe in um, Jesus or, or, or the Bible and do it in a way where they're not um, isolating themselves further and further into a community that is extreme, that believes unprovable things and demands kind of unflinching loyalty to unprovable claims. I mean, what the hell is going to happen when this obviously doesn't come to pass? I guess we'll talk about it next Sunday. What, what the fuck's going to happen to these people who are saying the second coming of Christ uh, is coming tomorrow? I have a theory, which is that they're going to do what Jehovah's Witnesses did and what Adventists did before them was just to say, well, Christ just began ruling invisibly in heaven. I think that's what they're going to do. And until that time, no president in the past in U.S. history ever made Jerusalem as the capital. Hang on a second. Although many presidents in the past, they promised that we will do but they couldn't do and they did not do. There only one they president. They couldn't do and they did not America, do. 
who declared that Jerusalem is the capital. <laughs> the of sheer Israel. overwhelming number the same year, of subscribe, it like, subscribe. From Oregon to South Carolina. South Carolina is the place where the civil war broke out in America. Mm -hmm. It's very really interesting to see that in 2024, that is so you could see like this sort of if then fallacy is what Watchtower does, right? They're like, okay, so the Bible says this date. And if we take math, the year for a day principle and add it all up, it leads to 1914. What happened in 1914? World War One. And then what happened in 1919? This, this, and this. And like, this is what Watchtower is doing with Russia. And to me, it's just very funny that they clearly backed the wrong... Horus, prophetically speaking, like, I imagine, can you imagine how well witnesses would be eating right now if they had kept Charles Taze Russell's intense, like, Zionism as a part of the religion? Like, early Russell writings get into this exact kind of thing, which is that the nation of Israel plays a part in Bible prophecy, because the Bible says it does. But Rutherford was a huge anti-Semite and slowly undid a lot of that stuff and now the religion doesn't really teach that at all but boy if if they did now it's almost weird that they don't they're like actually that the israel and palestine thing even though those are places in the bible that kind of doesn't matter as much as russia being the king of the north despite whatever so i just see a lot of similarities in the logic they're they're uh using here but this goes to a really that wild that place that's coming I strongly believe that the Lord will bring back President Trump as the church pray, intercede, and stand firm in faith. The Lord will fulfill the prophecy. And this time, this eclipse is coming from Texas. Texas is in a dispute in the recent months, as we see in regards to the Eagle Pass. That is the exact way where this eclipse is also going to come. We see that the border is wide open and the National Guards are having some conflict with the federal agents. And we see that so many things happened in the last few months that was unfolding, kind of contradicting each other. And ah, this is really so many one things. of the plans of the enemy to bring civil war in the nation. But as we pray, intercede, the Lord will avoid every civil war that the enemy is triggering to make it happen. And God will bring President Trump. And this specific eclipse is going from all the way from the Texas and it is going all the way to Canada. And this is really important. This is really significant. The Lord wants us to understand that this is very important to pray. More, every pattern more of subscribe is be and broken. The Lord's power is coming upon the nation. Salvation is going to come more, upon the nation. Even more. David was anointed as king, but he waited more than 40 years. Even more. Saul was able to finish his complete period. And then like his season is over and God made David to go and sit in the throne. And even I right wanted now, to see this. Like, a, he Paul does Salem this thing where he's like... 2017 eclipse. <laughs> They do this weird thing about like where the paths of the eclipse intersect. It's really bizarre. But anyway, um, so there's a lot of groups that are are using this like confluence of there's an eclipse. And I don't think so. I don't think so. When is the eclipse like what time? You know what's on? Like, honestly, I legitimately don't know or care at all. <laughs> like, I don't. I've seen a few eclipses in my life and I'm sure I'll step outside and look at it because we're really close to it. But I feel kind of, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me that I don't care so much. <laughs> I don't care that much. Um, hey, good luck on your interview, Sarah. Good for you. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rough. So prof, Wait, Prof NC, you're right. We got to watch the one that misspelled prophecy. Wait, there's one that got like 2 million views. Incredible Prof NC. <laughs> there's one that, but see how many views these things get? I don't get this many views on my channel. Shows what good I'm doing. This video is absolutely nuts, by the way. Have you ever seen this Kim Clement guy? I think he's thankfully dead now. Damn, where's that one that had... 2 million views. I don't know. But anyway, that was on my mind. Now I want to look at... Let's look at that uh, guy who we watched in that poopified segment. This is this um, Seventh-day Adventist spinoff group that I've been keeping an eye on because I plan on doing a video about them. Um, it's really uh, quite a strange channel. I talked about this on the Secret Patron stream last week, I think. But um, this guy, whose name I always fucking forget. I think it might be Andrew. Or Andre or something. Maybe it's Andre from the Young People Ask Books. Um, it's him and his wife. 
they are the patriarch and matriarch of this group. And as you can see from their banner here, take a look at banner, Michael. They've got like an in-person congregation. And you, you look at these views here, their daily devotional, which is like a daily text type thing. It's just this lady reading the text. Um, look at their live streams. This was yesterday. This earthquake, solar eclipse, and conspiracy theories, which he, of course, doesn't believe they're conspiracy theories. This has 22,000 views. It was streamed 23 hours ago. I, I happened to see them live when I was editing a video, and there were over 1,000 people watching live. We have, like, if I get over 200 people watching, that's a pretty am amazing turnout for my small-ass channel. But this Seventh Day Adventist group, which is not even the biggest one of these on YouTube, by the way, they believe everything. They believe everything you possibly can believe from like New World Order and Illuminati stuff to basically just what Jehovah's Witnesses believe, which is this Adventist millenarian interpretation of the Bible all wrapped up in the second coming of Christ and, and Armageddon. So it's really quite bananas. But then they have podcasts. Oh, shit, I guess. What did they do? Their podcasts are also really weird. Like, imagine um, imagine JW Broadcasting do this. Kanye from Monday service. That, what? This isn't even what I was thinking of. But I think that their video making is in some ways more sophisticated than what Joe's witnesses do and in some ways less sophisticated. Um, this group, like, they do things like they encourage women to not even wear swimsuits. That's how intense about modesty they are. Um, so they're quite weird. And I just wanted to watch a little bit of uh, this guy talking about the eclipse because he's very weird and his stage is amazing his stage is absolutely incredible look at this they don't do it like this at the kingdom hall but this is pretty remarkable i mean they had thousands of people watching all donating giving money this now just in less than a day has twenty two thousand views like they're making some good money with ads Watchtower doesn't have this at all. Watchtower, if they put their stuff on YouTube, they could get money from it. Like that, it's, it seems like they just don't get it. Uh, and this is, in some ways, even weirder than what Watchtower does. But, okay. <laughs> Wait, why is this so high up? Oh. Father in heaven. On this, your holy Sabbath day of rest, we bomb in your what presence. What is he fumbling for in his pocket? Okay, I want to get to the point the where Spirit. he talks about sunglasses. Take full control of every heart, every mind. We pray for the second key in the five keys of survival. Talk to me. I'm talking to you. I'm not preaching. Come on. Second key is what? Country living. Look at your screen. Right off the screen. Country living. Page seven. The time is near when the... <laughs> he does these really bizarre, like, PowerPoint presentations that look like something you're high school math teacher put together um and he ties in world events and conspiracy theories and weaves it all into the bible he weaves it all into end time prophecy it's, it's pretty clever because he's getting like culture war internet <laughs> conspiracy theory types and he's getting evangelical types obviously there's a lot of overlap there but I think it's like it's very strategic. It's very smart what he's doing. Man, the part I just wanted to get to the part where he talks about sunglasses. It's really funny. $99. dollars $699. Dollars. That solar glass. Listen, that may have a take me to heaven. Being so expensive. Fly me to heaven. Imagine that. And you can see the hypocrisy. How can we take this and apply present truth? They are going to buy solar eclipse sunglasses to protect their eyes. Yet what does Jesus say 
to the mm -hmm. final stage of his church, Laodicea, what instruction does Christ give? Come and buy of me. Go trod in the fire, the white raiment, ah, and what? That should be just like the introduction to my channel. Like, bye. I'm bye. The anointing to anoint your eyes that mm -hmm. thou may see. See what? See God's face. Revelation chapter 3. Where are we going to, my friends? Let's read that. The Bible says okay, okay. in chapter 3 of Revelation, and look at verse 18. That's it, brothers and sisters. That's come it. buy of me. I counsel thee. Come buy of me. Not us. Let's look at this. Genesis 37. Open your Bibles, my friends. Look at verse 9. Look at verse <laughs> yeah. 10. The moon <laughs> represent the woman. The moon represent the mother. So what is going to... Oh, we could do a mashup with Sam Hurd saying mommy and this guy doing mother be the application in the bible what does a woman represent the church mercy in the bible who is called the mother church mm. it's roman catholicism what an object lesson what from the solar eclipse so what is the mission of the mother church of revelation 17 and verse 5 what's the mission of popery to eclipse obscure the light of Jesus Christ from reaching the people on the I'm earth. I'm going somewhere with this, what I promise. What an object lesson. But oh, my friends, the moon. Okay, so shut the fuck up. This guy is fucking annoying. He's so annoying. That's another reason why this video has taken a while, because uh, it's fucking annoying to listen to clips of that guy. And he is the main guy. Now, if you're like me, sometimes I watch videos or clips of people like that especially when it like ties into presidential elections just because it seems so ungodly <laughs> like an election just seems so secular to me uh that's probably my jehovah's witness uh background because obviously a lot of people are raised in churches where it's normal to be involved with uh, politics in your church and vote with your church but that was not my upbringing but um, then I think about the kind of shit I had to hear. It's not that different. Wait, why did it? Um, it's like, are you there? Okay. So this is the thing that was, I was kind of obsessed about, um, was a little segment of this talk. Really a segment of this talk is what the next video is about, where I just like, started getting a little obsessed with like one screenshot from one video it's like hyper focused and nitpicky like that david schaefer video i did <laughs> the church the woman church the guy when he talks is just so so performative are you there is your name there is your name written in the book of life yeah okay so this guy he has a much more comforting voice than, you know, crazy, whatever the fuck that guy's name was. I can literally never remember his name. Um, but like, is this really any different? This stuff that Jehovah's Witnesses teach? The first group, those who have been selected to rule with Jesus in heaven. Are their names written in this book of life? According to Philippians 4.3, the answer is yes. Ah. But even though they've been anointed with Holy Spirit, they still need to remain faithful in order to have their names written permanently in this book. Ah. The second group, the great Windows crowd of nipple. Armageddon survivors. Are the names of these faithful ones now written in the book of life? Yes. What about after they survive Armageddon? Will their names still be in the book of life? Yes. How do we know? At Matthew 25, 46, Jesus says that these sheep-like ones depart into everlasting life. But does that mean they are granted everlasting life at the beginning of the thousand year reign? No. Revelation 7, 17 tells us that Jesus will guide them to springs of waters of life. So, they so this just like kind of fan fiction-y bullshit is so nuts. And then, and to me, the main difference 
the thing that seems to separate Jehovah's Witnesses and from what I've seen of like Latter-day Saints, I think it's similar where they just speak in a more calm, soothing, robotronic kind of voice. Um, exactly. They just say it with a softer voice. And that's like when they portray the clergy in, in their artwork, it's always a preacher like yelling. And all they're doing is saying just as wild stuff, but just saying it with their, with their voice, which is nice and soothing and talking incredibly slow. I mean, shout out to that Prophesy Again TV Internet Seventh-day Adventist Church. They at least have a lady narrate their daily text things. <laughs> um most of you probably weren't there, but in the 60s, the literature said that the women saved from the dragon was the watchtower. Oh, man. That's scary. <laughs> hey, listen. The devil is real, friends. So as it I can summon his the voice. Goats, the goats who will be destroyed at Armageddon. Their names are not in the Book of Life. Second Thessalonians 1 9 tells us these very ones will undergo the judicial punishment of everlasting destruction. The, the judicial judgment, punishment those who deliberately sinned against the Holy Spirit. They too of everlasting They kind of went out of their way to say judicial punishment. Like they're like, it's like a judicial committee, but permanent disfellowshipping from the face of the earth. I feel like you guys are fucking messing with me with this. It's like so complicated but just like imagine if instead of like everlasting destruction wait what what, did, what was it? it was like these very ones will undergo the judicial punishment if he was like if jeffrey jackson talked like the goats who will be destroyed at armageddon be destroyed at armageddon their, oh, names. their names are not in the book of life no sorry bob Speaking of which, Bob is the evil the man does in the Twin Peaks universe. Like, if he was just yelling it, it would be very obviously the same exact thing as what evangelical Christians teach. But just because it's nice and quiet and whispery, uh, they get away with it. And people are like, oh, that's like a boring church. Second Thessalonians 1 9 tells us these very ones will undergo the judicial punishment of <laughs> it is. It's the Coldplay voice. <laughs> the same could be said of those who have deliberately sinned against the Holy Spirit. They too receive everlasting destruction, not everlasting life. So the first three groups are okay. The, <laughs> it's so complicated. The, anointed, the great crowd and the goats. Of uh -huh. these three, only two are found in the book of life. Now let's talk about two more groups. No, no, let's not. I'm sick of these. I'm sick of this guy talking about groups. Okay, but there's a, a part of this that's really, really uh that I wanted to focus on for my favorite little video. Why did I call it my favorite little video? That was a mistake. It's really not even my favorite video that I've ever worked on. Now that I'm doing this stream, it feels kind of unnecessary, but I've put too much work into it to quit on it now. Okay, so this is the thing that to me was like, this just distills everything about Christian cults in one image. This image right here. <clears throat> I found this while just pulling clips. And specifically, I wanted a clip about um, how they will teach resurrected dead Bible characters in paradise. <laughs> because the big video project that I was working on and all excited about was um, about the weird paradise headcanon that witnesses have and the stuff that I have. Um, and then I found this and was like, this is what Christian cults do, or this is what doomsday cults do, is they just, they put this interpretation that they have in, in brackets, and they make it inseparable from the Bible itself. Like, to a Jehovah's Witness, Daniel 12.1 might as well say, during that time, Jesus Christ will stand up at Armageddon, the great prince who is standing since 1914. <laughs> like, that's basically what they think the Bible says. And that's why it's hard to reason with them from the Bible. They just, they can't separate 
their interpretation from the Bible itself. Um, oh, people are asking, like, are apostates unredeemable or can they go? And uh, has anyone ever known an apostate that actually went back? Oh, boy, that's a good question. They they interviewed one person one time in David Splain's famous apostasy talk, a guy who was like, I was dabbling in apostasy. I even thought that Noah's Ark was a fantasy story. Uh, but I don't think so. I I think it'd be pretty hard for someone like myself to be like, on second thought, it's it really is the truth. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, no, what people do is they join other cults. They cult hop, uh, as the term goes. But anyway, I I think this it kind of says everything. Like the the Trump comet people who who think that like the second coming is coming because of an eclipse and presidents in Israel or something. Um, They've been embedded in these really specific evangelical kind of QAnon adjacent communities where they have this really dense interpretation of scripture where every word means something else. And so to them, like watching that guy who was showing a map with the eclipse, one of them, I thought it was the person that I showed, but it's another one, was like, okay, the path of the eclipse makes an A which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet and the American alphabet. And it stands like for the alpha, like God, he's the alpha and the omega. Really weird. But it's not that different from what Jehovah's Witnesses do. They just have different, they're not going to the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. You know, they're, they're getting self-published stuff off the internet or whatever. Um, and so I, I just find this kind of thing really interesting. But... To get into, uh, maybe this we can end with just a little teaser, a little prepping, prepping the combo for my next couple videos, which are going to get into Paradise lore quite a bit, because I really like Paradise lore. <laughs> I find it very interesting. I loved thinking about it as a witness, and I liked trying to crack all the little plot holes. Uh and this is a very, very strange and specific part of JW beliefs. To me, this is like pulling up one of their videos and realizing that they think that somehow uh, Eclipse protective sunglass lenses are a sign of the end. According to their deeds. But what deeds? Will it be their deeds committed before they die? No. Otherwise, no. the resurrection of the unrighteous would have been a pointless waste. Hear that. <laughs> It's just their own logic. No, it can't be, because then our religion uh, wouldn't make sense. So it has to be something else. And their deeds cannot be deeds from their former life. Rather, this verse must refer to their deeds in response to their training in the new world. Even such faithful men as Noah, Samuel, David, and Daniel will have to learn about the sacrifice of Christ and exercise faith in it. This is how full of themselves they are, that they think that they're so important and that the truth they have is so supremely truthy that they just know more shit about the Bible than like Noah and Moses. Of course, a witness would say, we live to see the fulfillments of certain Bible prophecies. It's just kind of nuts, right? To think that you, a Jehovah's Witness, are going to be, you are basically a Bible character. You yourself, a Jehovah's Witness, are a Bible character. You are undergoing this trial of faith. There's all these signs of the end coming. And like the nations of the world in bible -y times, they didn't see the signs until it was too late. But I'm going to make it past Armageddon. I'm going to see all of God's glory in heaven. And then I'm going to be elevated to this position where I get to teach resurrected from the dead Bible characters. <laughs> about the stuff they missed and you know, a little bit about what I was up to during the last days. We'll swap stories. I'll hear Noah talk about all the elephant shit that he had to shovel into the ocean when he was on the ark. And I'll tell him about that basement that I had to hide in during the great tribulation and that field that we ran into for no reason. And then Jesus killed a SWAT team and Jeffrey Jackson was there reborn as a Chad 
sculpted muscly dude on a horse with a light arrow. All of this also helps us to understand an amazing prophecy in the book of Daniel. I hope so. No. It's I hope 12, so. Verses one through three. There it says. All right, so that, but that's just fucking weird, right? <laughs> the fact that they teach people from the dead and they have like a PowerPoint presentation. Like, look at this. They're just using, like, if you don't know, this is art from Jehovah's Witness publications. They are very into this prophecy of this statue from the book of Daniel that each part of it represents a different world power and all that stuff. <laughs> So they're imagining like the midweek meeting structure, but instead of your Bible study being Mrs. Jones, whose door you knocked on last Saturday, it's Ezekiel or somebody. I don't know. I don't know what Ezekiel was up to. In the book of Daniel. Let's turn there. It's Daniel 12 verses one through three. There it says, during that time, Michael, who is Jesus Christ. <laughs> so he can just do that. He can just be like, Michael, oh, by the way, that means Jesus. Why? Why would that be the case? Why would Jesus be, what is it, Emmanuel? And Jesus and Michael? What's going on? Why would that be true? And they're just like, well, it has to be true because that's what, I mean, if, look how well it fits in with our end time prophecies. Anyway, um, so that's the kind of shit I'm getting into in my free time <laughs> uh he does say something that i like in this in terms of word whiskers not appropriate or weasel we adjust words, out think. chapter 12 and verse 2 it seems appropriate too that we adjust our understanding seems appropriate verse. notice that it speaks about people waking up in the form of a resurrection and this occurs after what's mentioned in verse 1 after the great crowd survived the great tribulation so this obviously is talking about a literal resurrection obviously obvious that was obvious all that right this is absolutely infuriating to watch <laughs> this and i'm making a video about it so i should probably stop but anyway uh kind of a shorter broadcast for me today but man my brain's been all messed up i'm readjusting to mainstream society <laughs> not really i just had you know mental health times. So I'm going to get cracked and I want to try and finish that video that references eclipse people. Uh, hopefully get that out, but it'll be up early for members. Uh, if you want to, uh, the, the channel has memberships. Now you can join obviously Patreon, but there's a lot of like exclusive videos that I've, I've made just for patrons that you can watch. So if you want some bonus shit, uh, you can watch it on there. I'm going to be continuing to work on my book that's coming out and all that stuff. And um, I really appreciate you being here. The The stream is like my favorite thing. I, I love doing it. It gives me something to get out of bed to do. So it's good times. Y'all take care. And I think that we should end it with just one more... <laughs> Just one more little adventure with David's plane and sauce. Welcome everybody to JW Broadcasting. My co-host -co is brother Isaac Murray. And his given name is Isaac, but we all call him sauce. I'm so glad to see you sauce, because we've got a lot of work today. If Satan could cause just one of Jehovah's promises to be delivered orally, you will have a son. Sauce will be his name. If you Jesus, you are no friend of Sauce. He's God's friend. Jehovah loves his friend, Sauce. He wants you to love Sauce, too. Maybe I'm being too sensitive, but I was hurt by what Sauce said the other day. Brothers Plain, always lose. How reassuring that is to all of us.